Hello, this is Patrice Wenling at the American Society of Hematology speaking with Dr. Ken Anderson. Doctor, we're seeing several uh, second generation protease inhibitors and new targets here. What stands out at the meeting for you here? We have an oral proteasome inhibitor, MLN9708, and we have a more broad inhibitor than either of those um, called merizumib, uh, which blocks the chymotryptic, tryptic, and caspase-like site. But what's in common about all these three new proteasome inhibitors is they are very potent and they work in patients when bortezomib does not. So we're extending the benefit of proteasome inhibition to a broader net of patients. We have novel combinations with proteasome inhibitors here. So the proteasome inhibitor, bortezomib, blocks the proteasomal degradation of protein alternative pathway is called the agrosomal pathway for degradation of proteins and that other pathway can be blocked by histone deacetylase inhibitors. So here at ASH this year we have already phase two and three trials where we've combined bortezomib to block the proteasome with HDAC inhibitors such as vorinostat or panabinostat to block the agrosome and what we uh, are hearing here is you can, in so doing, increase the response rate and, again, extend the benefit of, uh, to a broader spectrum of patients in that patients uh, who no longer respond to bortezomib do respond to the combination. So on the one hand, we have second generation more potent agents, and then we have combinations that are looking promising. In addition, I'll just mention that the other novel class of drugs that we have here are the immunomodulatory drugs. Previous uh, ASH meetings have been highlighted by thalidomide and lenalidomide, but at this meeting uh, it's pomalidomide, the next generation more potent agent, and studies from France and the United States, and in particular Mayo Clinic, all show that this oral new immunomodulatory drug pomalidomide works about 30 to 40 percent of the time uh, when literally nothing else does and it's well tolerated. So new agents. We're also seeing um, some movement in cytogenetics and instead of it being just a simple black and white good and bad, um, it's becoming something of a moving target. Could you speak to that? Surely um, the rules of the past no longer apply. Uh, what was standard risk or high risk for conventional therapy or high dose therapy uh, doesn't um, no, is no longer relevant in the era of novel targeted therapies. So 414 translocation or deletion of chromosome 13 no longer are high risk. The 17P deletion or P53 abnormality persists as an adverse feature. Now what's happened at ASH this year is, uh, as in other cancers, so it's true in multiple myeloma, uh, traditional cytogenetics or FISH evaluations are really being uh, usurped by modern genomics. So DNA analyses, RNA analyses, uh, microRNA analyses, splice RNA, proteomics, and yes, uh, whole genome and exome sequencing are all being done and what we're trying to do as was reported here by several groups from England, from Spain, from France, from the United States is to integrate the different levels of genomic abnormalities in order to get a real signature of what the patient's tumor is like at a given point in time. And it's identified a very complex heterogeneity even from the outset. Moreover, it's shown that as the patient uh, goes through his or her disease course and the activity of the disease waxes and wanes, so we have marked changes in the genetic program. So personalized medicine in myeloma, as in other cancers, is going to depend upon this integrated genomic analysis at a given patient at a given point in time if we're going to try to deliver medicines to work in specifically in that context. So there's remarkable advances being made, but the more we learn, the more complex it's becoming. When clinicians go home and try to take this back to practice, it's going to be a very complex matter. And when will some of these things be really be able to be brought into to current practice? I think what's going to happen over time is, uh, and the clinician should, uh, will have from this meeting um, many new therapeutic options. So there's uh, lots of joy uh, in this holiday season. 
uh, the second generation agents and the combinations in particular. Uh, in terms of the application of modern day genomics, that's going to be a more gradual phenomenon because we're going to need to see over time together with our patients what are the genomic markers of sensitivity to a particular therapy or lack thereof. So in plain English, what we'll be doing is redefining the standard in high-risk myeloma, but this time with a much more comprehensive and uh, genomically based uh, patient signature.